Ciao a tutti, benvenuti a Milano. Alla sera leoni, la mattina in bocconi. Hey guys, so a lot of you recently have been applying to Bocconi, which is awesome. And one of the questions a lot of you had was about the Bocconi admissions test. So I'm going to answer all your questions today because there aren't really many resources about the Bocconi test online besides the Bocconi webpage, which doesn't have all that much information. So I'm going to be providing some information from a student to another. <laughs> first things first, if you can avoid taking the Bocconi test, please do it. You have the opportunity to take the SAT or the ACT, which are two other exams, but they're in English. And they're much more convenient, and also you can get a score that you want. With the Bocconi test, you have to take it once, and that's it. If you don't pass or don't do well, then you have to use it anyway. But with SAT or ACT, you can take the exam as many times as you'd like until you get the score that you're satisfied with, and you can submit that score to Bocconi. So that's the main reason I would recommend it. So first, I'm going to be telling you about the Bocconi test, and then afterwards, I'll be weighing the advantages and disadvantages of the Bocconi test with the SAT and the ACT. So first, the Bocconi admissions test, what is it? What is it about? What's the format, etc.? So the Bocconi admissions test is kind of similar to the SAT or the ACT, except there are 100 questions and you can answer all of them in two hours. And the thing about the Bocconi test also, I did not even take the test. I took the SAT and I submitted that instead, but a lot of people talked about the Bocconi test and I asked them for advice about it. And so I compiled a list of the best advice to give to you from them and also a lot of information about the exam. So this 100 question exam apparently is very difficult to finish in two hours and the main point of the exam is answering as many questions correctly as you can because if you do answer a question incorrectly you lose one third of a point. If you answer it correctly you gain a point and if you don't answer it at all you don't gain or lose any points. Uh, there are four parts of the exam quantitative reasoning, mathematics, logic, and reading comprehension and some of that does include data analysis in the form of problem solving or quantitative reasoning, I suppose. Okay, so the strategies for the exam. What a lot of people told me to do that works the most effectively is to answer all the questions you think are the easiest first because you wanna get as many questions correct as possible so you can have more points. And at the end, come back to the difficult questions that you weren't able to answer in the beginning. You don't wanna risk losing a third of a point for answering a question you don't necessarily know the answer to right away and you can always have time to like think about it throughout the exam and maybe it'll just come to you. You don't want to dwell on one question, it'll take up too much time and you only have two hours. The exam is definitely about problem solving under pressure and also organizational skills so if you're not able to time manage correctly you're not going to be able to pass the test. So some of my friends told me that you should not necessarily practice with the exam because it comes naturally to you. Personally, I would feel very anxious during this because you only have one chance to take the exam. I mean, per session, like they only offer one exam per session. So you have to reapply completely if you don't pass the exam or if you don't do well compared to the other people who take it. So in this case, please make the most of your opportunity to take the exam each time you do so and do prepare. The best way to prepare that people have told me about was to practice with the online equations. Actually, I found a practice test online and I'm gonna link that down below for you guys so you know what the exam looks like, the format, um, basically what kinds of questions will be on it, the difficulty level, and definitely practice with those and find other questions like them and just like practice your skills in general when it comes to those four topics I previously mentioned. And yeah, that's really all I can say about the exam. It's kind of a hit or miss kind of thing. I mean, if you don't pass the exam, Good luck. I mean, it's not really a pass or fail kind of thing. I don't think they ever actually tell you your exam score. They just use it to assess your abilities to take tests under pressure and see how good at exams you are compared to your peers who apply also for the same program that you're applying for. Just so you know, this advice is all from the students who have been accepted, so you can trust it. Don't worry. <laughs> You can register for the Bocconi test online. There should be a link to it on the website. If you can't find it, you can type it in the search bar and it should come up easily. As I previously mentioned, yes, the Bocconi test is a lot riskier than taking the SAT or the ACT. I'm a huge advocate for those exams for many reasons, which I'm about to tell you. And uh, just so you know, I'm not saying the Bocconi test is bad. I'm just saying it's not as good of a way to be accepted as it is to take the SAT or the ACT. Okay, now on to the SAT. So the SAT and the ACT are both American exams and they're provided internationally. The thing about this exam, it's much easier to prepare for. You can take it as many times as you'd like until you get the score that you're happy with. And also, it's definitely not an official fact, but I mean, a lot of us know 
that people who took the SAT or the ACT instead of the Bocconi exam kind of have a better chance of being admitted because a lot of people have said that their friends who had the same credentials that they did were not admitted even though they were and the only difference was the exam taken. So I would definitely go with the safe bet of taking the SAT or the ACT if you speak English fluently. If you're Italian and you're going for the Italian course, of course, go for the Bocconi test because it's going to be in your language. But if you're a student applying for an international course, the exam will be in English nonetheless. So please, go for the SAT or the ACT. So what is this exam? I'm going to be talking about both exams and the differences, I guess. So the SAT is an exam that tests math, reading, comprehension, and writing slash grammar. And also there's an essay at the end, but they're all multiple choice. And there's actually a new exam as opposed to the old one. The old one was 2,400 points, the new one is 1,600 points. And the new one does not take off points if you're incorrect. In fact, it just leaves it blank just as if you hadn't answered the question in the first place. That's definitely a benefit and encourages you to guess and you can definitely get points from that. So that's very good. And also, when you take this test, you can sign up for several exam sessions in each year. So usually there's one in the winter, one in the spring, one in the summer, probably multiple for each, depending on where you live in America. There are a lot of them, depending on if there are test centers near you. In other countries, I'm not so sure, but I mean, there are probably several sessions offered. And the SAT, I didn't really think it was that bad because a lot of what we were tested on, we learned in school, like math. It was like math problems that you would do in school. So I was very used to that. And reading comprehension, also similar to what we did in school. Grammar, I like grammar, so I got that. And the writing, also what we do in school. So it's not too far off from the American curriculum. If you go to an American high school, I definitely recommend it. If you go to an international school that is American-based, definitely recommend the SAT. And also, it's much easier to prepare for it than the Bocconi test because you can hire a tutor to train you just for SAT, or you can use books to prepare you, or you can self-study with Khan Academy, which is a website that provides free videos and practice questions and solutions that are worked out online. So it's amazing, <laughs> a really great resource. I didn't hire a tutor, I used Khan Academy to study. I didn't study that much because I didn't wanna like spend too much time with the SAT. I felt like that was only like a minor component of my school application, so I'd rather have spent more time on my grades and my extracurriculars. Uh, if you're wondering what a good score is for that, I think it depends where you come from. My score personally was 1340 out of 1600. That got me into Bocconi, so I guess that's a good benchmark of what you want to get, maybe. <laughs> and the ACT is an exam similar to the SAT, but there are different subjects. There's a science section, which is mostly data analysis, math, similar to the SAT math, reading comprehension, similar to the one on the SAT, and writing, and also an essay. And when I say writing, I mean grammar, once again. And also, there are some historical components in the reading comprehension. I prefer the SAT because I am not the best at science. I don't think it's interesting. I don't like the classes. I don't like the subjects. So I took the ACT, but I didn't really use that score because I did better in the SAT. And also, I didn't want to retake the ACT because I didn't want to have to learn science if I never was going to use it again. I mean, I was going into business, so I would want to know science. Just basically, I recommend that you choose one of these because, as once again, the ACT is easy to study for. You can study online. They have a website where you can just do practice questions. And also, there are tons of tutors that are willing to help you online and in real life. These exams can be registered for online, just like the Bocconi test, but not through the Bocconi website. It's like they have their own websites. I'll link both of them below in case you want to sign up right now. Once again, the ACT has many slots for you to sign up, so if you don't like your score, you can retake it and you can study harder, you would know what you need to practice next time, but yeah, with the Bocconi test you can't do that. You just have to completely reapply for the school, resubmit your grades, repay the fee, um, rewrite the essay, everything. You don't even know what's wrong with the application for Pete's sake. It could have been like the essay was bad, maybe you would still have to retake the exam, so it's just not even worth it to me, so, yeah. And plus, if you submit the SAT or the ACT, it means your English is definitely good enough to take an exam in a different language, so it means that you're more, like, international, I suppose, that's what people are kind of saying. Once again, do not write my words in stone, I'm definitely not saying this is all on behalf of Bocconi, it's completely not. 
just a disclaimer, like all of the things I'm saying right now are from me and my own experiences with the Bocconi tests and from speaking with other students who took them. So that's all I have to say about the exams. If you have any questions whatsoever, please feel free to ask below because really there are not many resources online about this. So if you have questions, you can ask. And if I don't know the answer, I'll ask someone who does know the answer and I'll let you know. So I got you guys, don't worry. <laughs> Anyways, um, if you have any other questions about the Bocconi admissions process, feel free to comment down below as well and I'll maybe make a video about it or answer your comment, so yeah. Uh, I hope this video helps, and good luck to all of you with your applications. Thanks again for watching, be sure to subscribe to this channel for more info about Bocconi, Italy, university life in general, Italy vs. America, you name it. <laughs> Follow us on Instagram, I have my personal account linked down below if you're interested in seeing photos from Bocconi life. I post on my story, so if you want to know what I do every day, day in the life of a Bocconi student. Also, we have an official Milano account on Instagram. So feel free to follow that for daily vlogs. Sometimes we do like daily vlogs. We like show you around the town or if something interesting happened, we vlog it. So, so yeah, if you don't follow, you might miss it. <laughs> so anyways, thanks again for watching guys. Love you so much and see you next Monday. Ciao. Mwah.